Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the 39th President of the United States, Jimmy Carter. First of all, I want to thank Imam Majid for that introduction and also for helping us in one of our projects at the Carter Center that's very important to me, about which I'm going to be speaking later on this afternoon. I also want to ask your permission to borrow your next president to come and raise funds for us at the Carter Center. <laughs> if he can do that well here, I know he can be, help us a lot. Well, this afternoon, I know I'm on a strict schedule, as everyone else has been doing this uh, meeting for a luncheon. And before I start my own talk, I want to urge you to comply with the request to give generously to the Islamic Society of North America. When I began running for president, I was told that America was a melting pot. And I learned that that's not exactly true. America is more like a beautiful mosaic where people come here from other countries and from other societies, from other religions, from other cultures, keep their own identity, but they blend in, blend in to make a beautiful picture. So because of that, I want to thank you for letting me come to speak to my fellow Americans about a subject that's very important to me. I've been asked this afternoon this, at this luncheon to talk about the Carter Center. And I'll be very uh, brief about it, but also try to tell you what we do. Uh, since I was uh, retired from the White House involuntarily by the election results in 1980, I've already learned since I got here in Detroit that a lot of you supported me when I was elected. And so I know you shared my disappointment that I wasn't there alone. But, but since I left the White House, my wife and I have devoted full time to working at the Carter Center now for about 35 years. The Carter Center has some basic principles that we, that we follow very closely. First of all, we're nonpartisan. We welcome Democrats, Republicans, and everyone else. And also, secondly, we don't duplicate what other people do. If an adequate uh, effort is being made by the United Nations or the United States government or Harvard University or the World Health Organization, the Carter Center doesn't get involved in it. We just fill vacuums in the world. And one of those vacuums is peace, particularly in the Middle East. One of our deepest commitments at the Carter Center <laughs> is to bring peace to the Middle East, and we've never stopped since I left the White House. At this very moment, the Carter Center has a full-time office in East Jerusalem. We have a full-time office in Ramallah. We have a full-time office in Gaza. And our people were there. Our people were there in 2008, 2009, 2012, and this year, when the terrible bombardment of Gaza destroyed so many homes, hospitals, and schools. So one of our major commitments to continue will be continue to meet with the people in the Middle East who can bring peace to Israel and to all its neighbors, and with justice and human rights to people and its neighbors. We follow the basic principles of the United Nations, the United States government, and all the European countries, and most countries on Earth. And that is that Israel should withdraw from all the occupied territories to the 1967 borders. <laughs> modified only by an agreed uh, delineation of a little more territory for Israel near Jerusalem in exchange for property given uh, to the Palestinians in their own homeland. That's a basic principle that still pervades the international community, and that's where the Carter Center stands. As you may know, I've written three books about the Middle East. The first one was Blood of Abraham, where I visited all of the countries, Israel, the Palestinian area, Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, 
and I've met with the leaders to see what do they want in the future for their children and grandchildren in the way of peace. And I wrote this down verbatim from those leaders in the book called Blood of Abraham. The second book I wrote was one uh, that's called Palestine, Peace, Not Apartheid. And I wanted to point out that within the occupied territories, there's a choice between a two-state solution, which could be give justice to everyone, or a one-state solution that would be a very serious catastrophe. And the last book I wrote was more de definitive, and that was, we can have peace in the Holy Land. So continue with our peace effort at the Carter Center is very important to us. One thing the Carter Center does is meet with people with whom the United States government quite often won't meet, or the United Nations or won't meet. We go to North Korea on occasion, we go to Cuba, we go to the, meet with the Maoists uh, in Nepal, we meet with all the leaders in Sudan, and we meet with all the leaders in the Palestinian community, trying to get them to come, come together so that we can hold another election in Palestine as we have already three times. So to bring peace to that area and to bring peace to other places in the world is a major commitment of the Carter Center. Another one is to promote freedom and democracy. The Carter Center organized, first of all, an international observer team to go into foreign countries to witness their elections and to make sure that the elections were honest and fair, free, and safe. The largest Islamic country on earth is also the largest election that we have monitored, that's in Indonesia. And we were there when uh, Indonesia had its first democratic elections. We went back five years later and monitored the second democratic election. And so the Carter Center has had projects monitoring elections in a number of Islamic countries. Some of those I know are the homelands for all of you. We've now finished monitoring 98 troubled elections on earth. And we're still trying to bring democracy and freedom with safe and honest elections to the people throughout the world. We'll continue to work on this, and, and that's another uh, example of the effort that the Carter Center makes. Another one is to bring, alleviate suffering. I know that's, that's another commitment of ISNA, is, uh, which is a lot, just one of the many things that we have in common with this great organization. The Carter Center deals with six diseases on Earth. Measles is one of them. And the other five are what is, is called by the World Health Organization to be uh, neglected tropical diseases. And neglected is very important because these diseases are no longer known in a country like Egypt or even Syria or certainly not Europe or the United States or Canada or Japan and so forth. They only afflict the poorest people on Earth most of them in Africa, but a lot of them also in Latin America. And these are diseases that even many medical doctors among you would not know about. One is trachoncolysis, or guinea worm. Another one is trachoma. Trachoma is the number one cause of preventable blindness on Earth. Another one is river blindness, which is also called onchocerciasis. Another one is called schistosomiasis. Another one is called lymphatic filariasis. Those diseases, lymphatic, lymphatic polarizes, by the way, is the same as elephantiasis. That's when a person's sexual organs or arms or legs swell up to grotesque sizes. So this requires the Carter Center to go into countries uh, that ordinarily are not visited by others from the outside world. And we work with the governments, but we don't send any money or medicine to the government. We don't go directly to the villages. And I'll just mention one of the diseases, and that is a river, that is guinea worm. When we started out with guinea worm, we found this terrible disease uh, to be extant in 20 countries, three in Asia and other 17 in sub-Saharan Africa. And we found three and a half million cases of guinea worm in 26,500 villages. The Carter Center and the people we train have been in every single village that has ever had guinea worm. And we now have cut the three and a half million cases down. Last year, we had 148 cases in the entire world. And we, and we expect soon 
that this will be the second disease ever eradicated from the face of the earth. The first one happened to be smallpox that was finally finished uh, in 1979 when I was president. So that's the kind of work we do. We also treat millions of cases of rubber blindness every year so that people won't go blind, and the same way with trachoma. As a matter of fact, this year, the Carter Center will treat about between 35 and 40 million people. And this is equivalent to the number of people who now live in California. So you can see how widely ranging the Carter Center's health programs are. Another thing that we do each year is to concentrate on human rights. And that's where Imam Majid has been helpful to us, along with others from this organization. Every year we have a conference at the Carter Center to discuss what we think is the most important human rights issue. A few years ago, after 9-11, the Carter Center analyzed the abuse that many Americans experience with the deprivation of basic civilians' rights to privacy and to equal treatment under the law, including the fact that no one would go to prison unless they had had uh, counsel and unless they had charges given against them and unless they were found guilty of a crime. So those are the kind of things that we saw happening in the United States of America that needed to be addressed on a global basis. Because when the United States lowers its standards in enforcing human rights, it sends a signal to all of the oppressive dictators in the world, we can do the same and we will not be criticized because of it. The last three years, we've concentrated on the same subject that I'll discuss more definitively this afternoon. And that is the abuse and deprivation of the rights of women and girls on Earth. This is one of the worst human rights issues that are not being addressed on Earth. And we will go into that sometime this afternoon. And I hope that you will come to the session this evening, this afternoon, and listen to my more complete exposition of what this means. Well, let me say again how proud I am to be with you. I look forward to continued cooperation between ISNA and the Carter Center because we share so many things in common. We all Americans wanting to insist upon basic human rights, peace, freedom, justice, and the treatment of each other as equals. And particularly, I think, those who are deeply religious, like all of you, and like I happen to be, I'll be teaching my Sunday school class my Bible lesson tomorrow morning when I get home late tonight. And I hope that all of you will use the principles of Allah and our God to bring peace and justice to all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. We have a token of award for you. This is Raid Sher Isna, presented the Honorable Jimmy Carter by the Islamic Society of North America in recognition of your invaluable contribution to international justice, human rights for all, and international peace and harmony. <laughs> 